still ripping. Hour and a half now. It's July and I'm catching a flight to Labrador. The Canadian province shares a border with Quebec and together they make up one of the last great wilderness regions on earth. Over the next three months I will attempt to cross the Ruith by canoe from east to west. I'll travel alone towards Hudson Bay with only my dog Saku and a camera. The expedition is an estimated 1,700 kilometers. Our starting point is the community of Northwest River, once a fur trading post for the old Hudson's Bay Company. After unloading, I check in with a wise trapper, Lloyd Montague who has spent his life on this land. I go seeking tips on our route ahead. More specifically, information on the seldom traveled Red Wine River. From the Red Wine? Yeah. Down through here. Well, you're gonna have a lot of little rapids. It's gonna be a hard, a hard go, I can tell you that. Yeah, where to do you think? Oh, there are little rapids and they're, and they're awfully shallow, you know? Yeah. Very, very hard. Hmm. What about the animals? Yeah, there's a few black bears, uh, but, uh, but uh, I, I, I'm sure you're prepared for the black bears. You get the same thing in Newfoundland, but yeah, yeah. Well, but you're going to encounter lots of black bears. Well, it looks like you got a good plan. You, you, uh, you've studied it. Uh, anything else you can add? I mean, I... No, I, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you much about the red wine up there. All right, Lloyd, well, uh, listen, I really appreciate you doing this for me. Okay, uh, good, yeah. good luck to you now. It's going to be shallow water, and you're going to have lots of porters. But, uh, yeah, good, uh, good luck to you now. My companion Saku, a Cape Shore water dog, is a hardy breed, an excellent swimmer. He loves life in the woods. But he still needs to be protected from ruthless flies and ticks, so I treat him with a medicine provided by professionals. This trip sprouted from the completion of several smaller journeys over the last four years. But this one is the biggest. To begin, we must ascend a river that flows steeply about 2,000 feet down from the height of land. Now everything is in order. With the canoe tied to shore, the expedition starts in the morning. Our first resupply is nearly 300 kilometers away. Let's go time buddy, let's go. You ready to go? You ready? Good boy. And that's it. We're off. My canoe is 15 feet long and with a modified bow seat, weighs about 56 pounds. It's made from a tough material, which I hope will last as we traverse the rugged terrain. In it we carry limited rations and equipment. 
The rest will come from the land. In the early going, we pushed through small rapids towards the first big lake. It is Grand Lake, and we must paddle 60 kilometers to reach its far end. So it's Friday, July 27th, and uh, we're on the move on day one here. Just made it up through the Narrows. Uh, it's called the Rapids, and that got us into Grand Lake. Uh, it wasn't too bad getting through, paddled three quarters of the way. And the uh, last little section I had to drag the canoe because the current was a little too strong for me to paddle against. Zach was out having to swim. <laughs> Zach, what are you doing, man? So down through Grand Lake it is, and uh, F 60K, I would say, is gonna be at least all day today and probably a half day tomorrow, maybe even uh, all day tomorrow because we're due for uh, heavy rains starting tomorrow morning. Winds might pick up, and this is a lake where you don't want to mess with high winds, you really don't. It's all come together. The trip has begun. Although it was flat calm in the morning, by afternoon, a stiff breeze sweeps in. With the lake being five kilometers in width, I paddle with caution. So we're just floating along, right across from Cape Caribou, and we got around 20 kilometers in so far today. And as you can tell, a little breeze picked up, and we got fair sized waves coming at us. Might have to pull in soon and take a break because the winds are gradually getting worse. Zach has got it easy so far. He's been taking naps, getting drinks. Good boy. It got shitty out quick. Uh, the wind's coming right at us, and I gotta find a spot to put the canoe in. It's all alders now on the side of Grand Lake, so it's not a very good docking spot. Just when I thought it was going to be an easy day, Grand Lake kicked up a fuss. Oh, got bad quick. I just pulled up there on a rock. There's nothing to do now but to wait this out. I don't think it's in my best interest. The wind is whipping across this way and it was pushing us right into the sides of the shore there and uh, I had to get off, so I don't think there's any point to flirt with that. Grand Lake can't be messed with. It can't be messed with. Day one here, and uh, we're off to an exciting start. After a two hour break, now we're back to work. So I'm just in here now, me and Sack, and uh, camp set up for the evening. And as the crow flies, we put in 30 kilometers on the nose. <laughs> there were some tense moments out there today, let me tell you. Uh, the wind picked up, and we pulled in and had a little two hour pit stop. And once we got going again, uh, I kind of picked up going around the peninsula. And there were some dicey moments there, but uh, we got our early warning to take our time on these big lakes and uh, they're not to be messed with. So, all in all, a good day one in the books and uh, it's time to fill the belly. We're just sat back here now, in front of the fire. Sack was down by my feet, having a snooze. Can't wait to get back at it in the morning. Thank you. 
for the day. And the movie game. Let's go, boys. 25 kilometers to the Nescafe River. Leave it, Saku. It's okay. No, 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 no. Stay. Good boy. So straight down here, my friends, is the mouth of the Nescafe. So, we finally made the Nescafe River. We're saying goodbye to Grand Lake in behind us. Coming in here to the Nescafe was, you know, the entrance. It's the real deal, it's real wilderness out here. Whew, I had goosebumps coming in, like, <laughs> this is crazy. As we were coming in, we spooked an eagle, but we interrupted his lunch. And that's a big, dirty pike, man. Holy jumpings. Every bit of, let's see, one, two, three feet long. Three feet, a three foot long pike. Whew, what a dog. He just got it mauled, look. Mauled to pieces. Anyways. I'd like to catch a pike of my own right now. Are you a herbivore? You're hilarious, bud. I tried for fish coming down Grand Lake, but nothing. Uh, I'd say I uh, was trolling 50% of the time with my hook out, dragging my harness, but didn't get a, a tug. So let's hope I can hook into a few pike like Mr. Eagle was eating there for lunch. Cross Labrador Docu Series is sponsored by Loa Canada. Loa, simply more. It's been roaring and thunder now for the last half an hour, 45 minutes here on the Nescopy. And there's a bit of rain falling now. We're gonna look for a site soon. We're a good ways up the Nescopy now, not far from the Red Wine River. Of course, when we came into the Nescopy earlier today, we began traveling upstream. It wasn't so bad. Uh, you could feel the friction out there with each paddle stroke, but all in all, it wasn't too bad. Oh man, it's crazy in here. So happy to be here. I really am. It's hard to believe, really. It's just cool, man. It's cool wilderness. I'm gonna eat supper now, and that's it for tonight. Something else I'm gonna have to draw some attention to soon is this fingernail. Uh, I squat that in the door of my truck around a week before I left, and now it looks like it's gonna be coming off soon it's starting to peel off on that end so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that too because I don't want to know an infection setting in so this is where we found camp last night uh, it's a small beach here but it's muddy as all hell we were coming up the Nescapi from that direction and all alongside the riverbanks uh, it was just choked with trees and it was very difficult to get in and find a spot I, I went into a couple spots no luck uh, I went in actually right across from here it was also no good I mean I could barely find a spot to sit down just myself let alone set up the tent we end up coming over here it's a little island here in the middle of the river uh, lovely spot lots of room to put the tent 
So I hope going off the red wine it isn't as difficult to find a campsite. Uh, I don't know. We will see. So everything's packed up. Uh, I was just getting ready to take the tent down and hit the road this morning. And uh, a heavy thunderstorm came in. And now it's pelting down rain. Just coming down like cats and dogs out there. It's crazy. So I'm going to hold up now and wait for it to fade away to a lighter rain. And then... Uh, should have the canoe loaded up in uh, 10 or 15 minutes and we'll be on our way. The rain didn't lit up at all, so uh, I decided to go ahead and break camp anyways. We gotta make ground. We can't be sitting around all day. It, it definitely eased up from the downpour we had, but it's still coming down uh, fairly heavy. We're making our way up now to the red wine. Paddling up in the Scappy River, one stroke at a time. We did it, Sack, old boy. We did it. We just made it up to the Red Wine River. Uh, just back over my shoulder, around that bend there, is uh, where the Nescapi meets the Red Wine. Whew. Good feeling. Uh, but it's getting close to 5 p.m. As you can tell over my shoulders, uh, the thunder clouds are rolling in. Looks like some, some rains are coming. So, the red wine will be the beginning of uh, some different up river travel. The, the river gets narrow quick, much more narrow than the Nescapi. And I could already tell in the first uh, couple hundred yards that uh, the current had a bit more of a push against us. So, uh, I imagine before too long we'll be out dragging the canoe. What do you think, Zach? We gotta get a tarp up, bud. The red wine is sandy, real sandy bottom on it. Just bottomed out then. It's a bit risky. See a couple lightning strikes. What's that, Zachu? Thunder? That's some dark, angry clouds behind me right now. It's like there's been thunder. I could hear it all day ever since dinner time for the last five hours. There's ripping in the distance, and it gets closer and closer and closer here. Wait for that. So, stay here, Sack. Stay with me. So, those jack clouds meant business. <laughs> it's uh, coming down now. It's coming down. Uh, I just had the canoe pulled in on shore. I could feel the, the system moving in, the wind was picking up. I just whipped my tent out of my bag to put it up and boom so I said I scrapped the tent 
I grabbed the tarp out of the canoe, ran in the bush here, strung it up uh, to a few alders. Crappy old job, but enough to keep us out of the rain. Still ripping, hour and a half now. Uh, mud, got my yin yang here, all over the mat bag. I uh, think that is waterproof. All over the tent fly. I really don't want to go out there and set the tent up. The lightning's still ripping, and the sun is cracking hard. That's asking to get struck right down the middle. So I think my only option is to sit here and wait it out. Storm that was. It came in just after five o'clock, and now it's ten to eight, almost three hours long. And uh, whew, I'm cold now because I got wet, and definitely got to just get the tent up, get in there, get some dry clothes, uh, and then get a fire going. Probably should have flipped that over. That's all right. It was that big of a rush, I'm telling you. I just had to get in there and get under that tarp. It looks to be coming to an end, I think, I hope. I'm gonna get camp set up now. Should be good to go soon. Hey, Zach, what do you think, bud? That's where I weathered the storm for the last few hours. In those alders underneath the tarp that I strung up as quick as I could. I gotta take that down now. And uh, I got camp somewhat established. The tent is a sandy old mess. It's a sandy operation of sand everywhere. On, on the inside, on the outside, on every little nook and cranny, uh, she sanded up. We are on the beach yesterday, it's been wet, sand and wet weather, does not mix. And it just means that there's going to be sand everywhere. Every little thing, I was picking my nose earlier, there's sand up there. So, until we get a good dry day and we can shake it all out. That's what we're gonna have to deal with. Things could be worse, couldn't they? We're here in the big land. Gotta love it. Anyways, I'm getting hungry. Time to get a bite to eat. Good night.
so we woke up to this. Uh, man, we're lucky we're not washed down the river. When I pitched at camp last night, or yesterday evening, uh, in the canoe, the shoreline was at least seven or eight feet or more from the tent. And you know, I know we had a lot of rain, but man, I didn't think it was gonna amount to this. It poured all last night, even more, uh, when we went in the tent. After it had its little break, it kept coming again. So luckily, uh, it's only the end of my tent here that got wet. We dodged a bullet. Anyhow, I'm gonna move stuff in, get a fire going, and I got some stuff to dry out before I get going today, I think. Looks like the upriver travel is gonna be even more difficult now with all this heavy runoff. So, that's all we can do. Just gotta keep plugging. Good boy. Hey, what do you think, bud? It's gonna be good, hey? Hey? It's all gonna be good. What do you think of the flooding, hey? Hey, what do you think of it? What do you think of the flooding? Are you surprised? Yeah, me too. One match is something you should practice because you never know when you're down to only one. The difference between life and death could be one match. From here on the Red Wine, we're only a couple kilometers, two and a half kilometers up the river. Uh, there's still about 180 on our path to get to the Smallwood Reservoir. Factor in some portaging because I know it's going to happen. That brings it up to around 190. But this is going to be some difficult upriver travel. Uh, I have no idea what the river is like. Uh, today, if I can put in 10k, I'll be happy. 10 kilometers, uh, that'll be good because this lower portion of the river shouldn't be as difficult as the upper. If I can get over 10, that'd be even better. But that's just some small goals I have in mind as I work my way uh, west. I got a little cup of sand coffee here this morning. Uh, the water's still looking pretty murky out there. A lot of sediment floating around. It's only dirt. You know what they say, God made dirt, so dirt can't hurt. Tastes good to me. I need to get fluids in the system, so there's no other choice. I got some dehydrated uh, stir fry in the kettle there now. and. Uh, with a dash of sand <laughs> and I'm sure it'll be good so when I have that meal I gotta fix up this fingernail it's starting to fall off I'm gonna fix that up I'm not gonna tear it off it's not ready to come yet I'm just gonna bandage it up so it won't hook into anything and uh, we should be pretty much good to go So uh, the current is starting to get pretty hard in our face. So I'm gonna start dragging the canoe because I think it might be a little bit easier than fighting the current. Uh, there's no rapids or nothing, but uh, it might be easier than paddling. So this is where we're to. 
big rocky beach but I'm getting sick of paddling now it's hard work against that current so do something different now Looks like that uh, mid to late afternoon thunderstorm is on its way in again. I've heard a few claps of thunder in the distance. Uh, it's getting awfully dark here. So that rain kicked in hard, uh, but I haven't heard no thunder in a while. Maybe it's just a hard shower. I don't mind so much staying out in that. It's not as risky. I just don't want to get struck by lightning. Uh, that would be fun. I got myself in a tight spot now. Uh, the current's pretty strong in this part of the river. Back to the too. Good boy, let's go. I might have to unload the canoe and lift it around this. This is sketchy. So the end of the day there was full of all sorts of activities. Uh, I was up to my chest almost, lining along that uh, steep muddy river bank there. Uh, but we made it. Saku slipped in himself and went for a swim, probably 20 or 30 yards down river. I had to tie the canoe on and go back to see if he was okay, but he was. And then uh, the rain did really come on heavy, uh, so we set up shop um, early evening here, and that's it for the day. It's actually kind of cleared off again. That's the way the weather's been. It's been thunder showers and sunny and back and forth. So that's it for me and Saku for tonight. We had a nice feed of dinner and uh, we we're gonna lay back, watch the river float by, and we'll see you in the morning. Good night. So it's just past 7 a.m. and uh, we're gonna get going, keep plugging up the red wine. So just gonna sit back here now, <sighs> breathe in the rest of this dandy morning, just a hazy little fog whipping across uh, the tops of the trees here. Everything is starting to emerge. I can finally see the peninsula in the distance and everything's coming out of the fog. So it's, it's a good sign. And it's a sign that we're gonna start and have another great day. So right now, 
we have to ferry across to the other side. Along here, it's too deep to walk any further. It's almost going up to my chest or more. It just around that corner, it drops off to over my head. So we're just gonna push out into this current and go diagonally, and I'm just gonna paddle straight, and we should just float horizontally almost right across this river. It shouldn't be too much of an issue, and I did it yesterday and everything was fine, but you get a raging river, and it's a lot more difficult to ferry. But even still, I gotta be careful with Saku in the boat. Uh, one wrong movement and it could spill uh, a dip for us. We'll, uh, we'll tiptoe across here. What do you think, Sack? All right, let's get in the boat. The current wants to take you and shift your boat all the way downstream, which means it will put you sideways, and that's when things can get risky. So I just gotta keep us on a bit of diagonal here. The thing is, the river drops off steeply uh, only about 100, 150 yards back. So the current is a little strong rough here. Perfect. We made it across to the other side. Uh, there's definitely some strong undertow. And we're going to have to do that a lot more over the next, uh, next little while. So right now, over there is a little piece of the brook and uh, or the river, and it branches off, and it uh, looks to be pretty deep. I think Saku can make it across and uh, <clears throat> follow me along the side of the bank. So let's see how this works out. Saku's gone downstream. I gotta go get him. Come on, let's go, Sack. Come on. Come on, Sack. Had a boy. That thing goes plain. It got really deep over there, and the current is stronger than it looked. I think we're just gonna do a quick ferry instead. Okay, Sack, get the boat. Come on, get the canoe, boy. Really drops after, so I'm just gonna have to line this along the bank. With some close calls in the early going, I had to make sure that Saku stays high on the riverbanks, where it is safe. There, in the bush, travel's also much easier for him. Let's go, come on. This way, come on, let's go, come on. So we got an interesting little ferry here. Uh, we got to cross over to the other side. There's white water uh, on both sides, kind of sandwiching us in. Uh, we got a bit of space to work with still. There's one down here and one over here. Uh, we probably got 150 yards. I think we'll be okay. It just gets a little rough out in the middle.
buddy. You got it. That didn't work out as planned. Uh, now we're stranded on Little Rocky Island. Jesus. I slipped up back there. Uh, just tried to skirt between two rapids, ferry over. The wind was strong in my face and uh, the current was just carrying us. Anyways, got off track, was half sideways, turned back straight, landed on an island. And then I just walked across. There was a spot where it was shallow the entire way. Thank God. We're almost to where we tried that ferry. I won't be doing that again. There's a big steep uh, rock wall there. I'm gonna have to climb up around it. So we got a big task at our hands now. Uh, we gotta go around this big rock wall, uh, but I gotta hack a trail, a portage trail up through here and around it because it's too deep right there to walk around. Uh, the, the rock is too steep itself. I, I'd probably slip and fall in and so would Saku. Uh, and we already tried to ferry across here and, and we were unsuccessful. So it's up behind me in this bush. I don't know, it's gonna be, the portage is only probably 50 yards, but this is gonna be an hour or more, guaranteed. So I'm gonna get to work. Catch you on the other side. So I got a portage trail, made around that rock wall, and the canoe's over. Uh, it was just a small trail, enough to squeeze the canoe through, basically. The canoe's there. It's hard work. Oh, man. Uh, I got the food barrel with me now. Hopefully it won't be much longer now, and we'll be setting up camp for the evening. As soon as this portage is done, I'm looking for a spot. Uh, we we deserve it. There's the canoe. I gotta get her down on the shore now, get her loaded up, and we'll get going. Man, what a plug. Yeah, we're back on track now. That portage took almost three hours cutting the trail, dragging things up, an incline that was almost 90 degree. That was crazy, but uh, that's it. I don't mind doing one of those every now and then, but I hope we don't have to do one for a little while. <laughs> We're going on now. Zach was getting tired and upset. I think he wants to make camp and you know what, so do I. So, looking for a spot now. Portages are a part of life on a canoe trip. Getting through them is what makes setting camp and enjoying the land around you that much sweeter. On this expedition, every portage requires me to make three trips. One for the canoe, one for the food barrel, and one for the equipment. Supper will taste good tonight. Today, we're somewhat recovering from yesterday evening's struggle. Uh, it got pretty tangly on the side of the river, trying to get around that cliff. Sack is behind me lying down now. He's extra tired this morning. He uh, he did a, a fair bit of walking yesterday. I'd say we walked 75% of the day. So that's it. There's gonna be more of that as the trip goes on and uh, I would say it's gonna get worse. We just gotta keep plugging along. Uh, another great day for moving. Boy, would I love a nice feed of trout in the belly tonight. Wouldn't you say? Be some good. Man. Come on, wait the hook. We're about an hour into the day. Boom, we got the first fish of the trip. Nice speckled trout. It's gonna go a long way in the pan tonight. Yoo-hoo! What a beauty. Now we are settling in upriver life. Lessons have been learned, 
and together we stride forward on the expedition with great confidence in one another. Thanks again to Lowell Canada for the support. See the pinned comment below to take part in our series opening subscriber appreciation contest. Good luck. I appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.